The objective of this demonstration is to analyze the effect crouching has on the drag force experienced when riding a bicycle. Open a new session of Discovery. Close the welcome screen and then browse for the file ansyscyclist-upright.dsco. This assembly has quite a few components. For large assemblies, Discovery excludes all the components and adds them to the simulation as conditions are applied. Right-click in the background of the main window and select Include All in Simulation to ensure that the entire cyclist is taken into account before we get started. To begin defining the simulation, click the External Flow button in the toolbar. Zoom out to get a better view of the enclosure indicated by the wireframe outline. Rotate the model slightly so that all six faces of the enclosure are clearly visible. In this simulation, the rider is going to be traveling forward, so let's select the front face as the inlet for the airflow. The next thing we need to specify is a ground plane. The bottom face of the enclosure will be a good approximation for the road. Click this face to select it. Once we've defined these two items, the simulation could be started, but let's wait a moment before running it. Rotate the model to the opposite side of the enclosure and click the Y axis in the orientation tool to align it with the screen. Before we continue, we need to make a few more adjustments to our operating conditions. The boundary conditions can be found in the physics tree on the left side of the window. Right click the water liquid entry and select edit. A new menu will appear on the right side of the HUD. Open the drop down menu next to water and change the fluid material to air. Click in the background and press Escape on the keyboard to exit the Material Assignment function. Next, click the value of the velocity next to the Flow Inlet entry and increase the flow velocity to 12 meters per second and press Enter. That's about 27 miles per hour. Now, let's go to the model tree at the top left of the window and locate Enclosure in the list of components. You may need to expand the entry for the assembly to see all of the components. You can scroll down to the bottom of the list to find the enclosure. Select the Hide Unhide icon to hide the enclosure. In this case, the fidelity setting is set to the default value. On this machine, that's 17.76 millimeters. Now we're ready to start the simulation. Locate the green Solve button in the bottom right corner of the window and click it. The simulation will begin running. Let's turn the streamlines off for now by clicking the Streamlines button. Show the contours by clicking the appropriate button in the Results panel. Hover the mouse cursor over the Contours button to access the options and set the surface display priority to Outer. Next, click the Cut Plane button to get a better view of the airflow around the cyclist. Rotate the model slightly and click the Cut Plane. The Move tool will appear automatically. Double click the red rotation handle to rotate the cut plane 90 degrees. Click the Y axis on the orientation tool to align the view with the screen. As we can see, there's a large pocket of slow moving air immediately behind the cyclist. This is caused by separation in the airflow as the air passes over the body of the cyclist. We can examine this further using streamlines. Pause the simulation and disable the contours display. Then, click the Streamlines button to activate streamlines. We have a large number of streamlines passing to either side of the cyclist's body, which makes it difficult to see exactly what's going on with the airflow interacting with the rider. We need to make some adjustments to see the results a little better. Rotate the model until the orange circle emitting the streamlines is clearly visible. The shape and size of this streamline emitter can be adjusted by clicking and dragging the orange outline. Reduce the width of the circle so that the streamlines are concentrated in the center of the cyclist's body, but still pass over the entire cyclist from top to bottom. Return to the side view and examine the results. Expand the Streamlines flyout menu by hovering the mouse cursor over the Streamlines button. Here, we can control the thickness and total number of streamlines, as well as whether or not they are sent out from an emitter with a specified shape or uniformly across the area of the flow inlet face. We have a pretty good indication of where the airflow is separating just downstream of the cyclist. Let's go back to our surface velocity display 
by disabling the streamlines and enabling contours again. Let's create a monitor to calculate the drag force being exerted on the cyclist in this upright position. We can create a monitor from the results section of the simulation ribbon. Click the monitors button and expand the select a variable menu. Select force, then click and drag a box around the entire cyclist and bicycle. The drag force will be parallel to the airflow, which is traveling in the X direction. So ensure that the X direction is selected on the right side of the HUD. Then click the green check mark. The monitors panel in the upper right corner of the main window should expand automatically. Right click the new monitor and select rename. Give the monitor a new name. In this case, we'll name it drag. Press escape on the keyboard to exit the monitor tool. Once we create the monitor, it will automatically report some results. Make a note of the drag value for the rider in this position. Now that we've obtained some results for the rider in the upright position, let's check if changing the position of the rider's body has any effect on the drag force they experience. You can save the first session here. Go to the file menu and click open. Locate ansyscyclist-lower.dsco and open it. As we can see, the position of the rider has changed. The simulation has already been configured for you, so just click the Solve button to run it for the new rider position. Adjust the results display as we did for the last file, and examine the quantity reported by the drag monitor when the simulation is done. As you can see, the quantity reported for the drag is significantly lower than what it was for the rider in the upright position. Looking at the velocity profile, we can also see that the large blue pocket of slow moving air behind the torso is no longer present. This means there's much less separation in the flow as the air passes over the rider. This concludes the demonstration on understanding the effect of crouching when riding a bicycle.